Also, why is it such a fucking crime to not like somebody? I don't like lots of people. <laughs> yeah, right? There's plenty of people I don't like, like every TSM fan. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tower Dive. I, of course, am your host, Captain Hook. And with me, apparently not as always, but it happens to be today. I missed one week. Okay. You, missed, you missed two. Okay, I missed one episode. Two episodes. You missed two episodes. I've done this twice on my own. Bullshit. No, yeah. I've, it was I've definitely only done one. You've missed twice. I don't believe you. I, you could just go back and look. I, mean, I will. Have them. I will. I believe it was a, a clever name of, it was like Pan IMSI you. Oh, you're right. I know. I remember okay, I've that. missed two weeks. But the first one doesn't even really count because, you know, we had only done like seven episodes before that. I think it was like episode 13 or 14. Okay, 13 episodes before that. Who's counting? I You am. know what? It's not all about the money. It's all, all right? about the money. <laughs> <laughs> As always is with me, Pan the Man. Here he is. Here he so, is. He's back. He's back. He's back. And not I had to, be- I had to not bring better that. than ever. Had to bring the sex appeal back to Tower Dive. We were losing all of our lady viewers. Do we have lady viewers? I think we have one. Did your wife not watch the day you weren't on? I is know, that what she is? didn't. She was busy as well. <laughs> she was busy being yeah. a mom. We were, a little, we were a little preoccupied having a child. Yes. It would have been great if I did the episode the day you were actually having a child. Yeah. And, and then I got mad at you for not being on the show. Yeah, and then you would have still made me edit the show anyway. I would have absolutely made you edit. Yeah. So listen, you're not getting out of this. We all have our duties. Yeah, you yeah. you you have a role to fill. It's my cross to bear. Exactly. This is how this works. Yeah. So I got to be honest with you. I haven't paid uh, a whole lot of attention to the League of Legends scene in the last two weeks. I, uh, you know, what with me being responsible for an infant's life. Oh my so god. So you might have to carry the show a little bit. So so what you're saying is <laughs> is after two after we're now in our second season. Yeah. Nothing has changed. Yeah, business as always. All right, I like it. <laughs> good, good, good to know that we're still working at the same parrot. This, yeah. we're working in the same paradigm here. Exactly. I like it. You I don't like want to. You don't want to change what's working for you. Listen, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. And if it never worked in the first place, then there's no choice. There's no bother to fix it. We're taking a page out of Riot's book. Exactly. Who? <laughs> oh, look, you're back, and we're already taking a shot at Riot. Right. God, I missed you. Right. So good. I was on. I was. I was on last week with the with the Four Wards podcast mm-hmm. myself yeah. with Doom Spikinator, who I found out his name is actually not Doom Spikinator. I thought he just didn't like Mexicans, <laughs> and yeah. I was plenty okay with that. I was like, hey, yeah. just, I mean, he's wearing that. More power to him. Right. Apparently, it's Doom Spikinator, MB. My bad. Yeah. And uh, and the old wise Papa Smurf himself. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the three of us did that, so... I gotta uh, say I'm a little jealous. That I was on and you weren't? A little bit. Good yeah, that and you were on a different show without me. Well, they asked me. Yeah, I know. And they want, and they wanted somebody edgy. No, I'm not edgy. <laughs> no. Come I on. can tell you that wasn't in the requirements with something that was edgy. I wear, uh, I wear way too much J. Crew to be considered so, edgy. Someone, the, the requirements were to be available mm-hmm. and to be online. I was neither of those. I was both of those, yeah, actually. Well... <laughs> bully for you right <laughs> it was it was it was a blast it was very weird being on a different show and very fun to not have to come up with what we were talking about yeah that's probably uh, a it was, nice it, it was not it was nice to be told what we're talking about it's like being on vacation yeah that being that being said we didn't really talk about what we talked about we were going to talk about mm-hmm. whoa in lieu of what I just said, that was makes meta, sense, right? That was seriously meta. <laughs> we started to, and then we kind of got off track. And at one point, we started talking about dick chain mail. Yeah, dick chain mail. Which I couldn't figure out uh, how we got to that point. It kind of so, sounds like Dick Cheney's metal band. It really just sounds like an awesome porn star's name. That too. So, and and that well, we, we were talking about champions that we liked, and Doom was bringing up that he likes Rexi. Mm-hmm. And then we were talking about how Rex is a chick, and and uh, Papa Smurf was like that she's she's not modest at all because in her um, in her pool party splash art she's just wearing a life preserver. Oh yeah, and that's, no that's, no bikini or anything. That's kind of hot. And he said that he's like she's like a like a dirty bird. I think she's I, just European. I said safety first. <laughs> 
and and that was and so like I said the the concept of of her sex appeal and how in Rune Terra she's like a three, but in the void she's like an eleven, I yeah, guess. Sure. And she is was, a queen. Yeah, and then we were just saying, and then look because you know I guess if she she got those teeth, and I said, you know, and he's like, look, you know, a BJ from those would be difficult, and I said, you need you know dick armor. Or he said something about dick armor. Dick and, chain mail. And then I said dick chain mail. Yeah. And then it became a hashtag. It became mm-hmm. the title of the show. And mm-hmm. it became a porn star's name. Yeah. It's next stuff. up, it's going to be one of uh, Donald Trump's talking points on his next <laughs> Twitter rampage. And and then it's going to be his running mate. Yeah. Donald Trump dick chain mail. <laughs> 2018. Trump, Trump and chain mail 20, 2016. Oh boy! So yeah, and uh, we actually have our own show. If you guys didn't notice, I don't we? believe you. I don't believe you. Yeah, we took a little break, a little little restaurant, and then mm-hmm. I came out with my solo gig, mm-hmm. and now you're back, and and we're better than than ever. Yeah, we're on the road uh, again. On the road again, like uh, was that was that Willie Nelson or is yes, that Willie Nelson? Eddie Rogers could have been both. Oh, I know make- Willie Nelson did it. Oh, well, then it's probably Willie Nelson. I don't know if Kenny Rogers did a cover of it. I don't pretend to be Or a, Willie Nelson did a cover of a Kenny Rogers song. I don't pretend to be a, a an understander or purveyor of the country music genre. No, you're not a you're not a connoisseur of the folk rock country music? I don't find myself reaching for my uh my my country re- my old school country records Whoa. Not, the dust on the waylon jennings record is still quite thick i gotta say you're not really missing that much I it's think, really just on the road again i think i think you're right i think and yeah. i think it's willie nelson yeah and if it's not we're just gonna say it is because i don't believe that the league of legends playing crowd that would be listening to tower dive are big league of let or, or they're not big league of legends Look, fans. hey don't they're, don't pigeonhole our fans <laughs> Okay. I'm not, but I'm just going to tell you what to do. Don't put people in boxes. I will put people in boxes. Don't put people in boxes. That's all I do is put people in boxes. It's very I, rude. It's, it's what I believe in. Well, whatever. Then I'm a rude person. I wear it. Well, I own it. Not, someone has, it's someone not has news. To be, someone, exactly. This isn't a surprise. <laughs> so he, he's just like, like uh, you know, I, I believe when on when I was on Four Wards, Doom was like, you know, whoa, I told you, you were a fucking asshole. I go, yeah, and I didn't refute that. I said, I wear it proudly. Yeah, it's on Thanks. your wiki. Thanks for noticing. Mm-hmm. Thanks for thanks for being there. So we actually have a show to do. Let's do it. And 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 we are going to do it. So um, you might have missed Pan that we are now in week two of the LCS. Or actually, yes. we're in week three. We just completed week two. Yes, I have been following the schedule. <laughs> I've loosely. seen it change. Yeah, I knew that there was, you know, the first week. And that happened, and then there was a second week that also happened. And, uh, as they as they do. And, and then the I, third I week opened is going up. I opened up the LOL esports site. Uh huh. And I switched it over to YouTube. Right. And then I looked away for a minute, and then I looked back, and it was back on Twitch. And I go, well, that's strange. So I switch it back over to YouTube, and I look away for a minute, and it's back on Twitch. I'm it like, just doesn't want you to watch what? It on YouTube. Yeah, that was infuriating. So I turned it right off. I turned, I turned that right off. I said, Sorry. absolutely not. I will only yeah. watch it on YouTube. It's a better stream. It's a better stream yeah. quality. I agree. I kind of prefer YouTube's as well. It kept forcing me back on Twitch, so I call it conspiracy. It, it, it was like raping your computer. That's, 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 a bit, that's a bit much. It was forcing itself on your stream. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. I'm going there. Okay, okay, you go there. I'll I'm, stay back here. I'm, <laughs> I'm keeping I'm, I'm keeping it... <laughs> yeah you're the edgy one i'm, I'm, the, I'm it, the one I'm edgy yeah yeah you're, you're long for the ride uh, okay just don't you, just don't get you hurt. go on you go don't, on i'll catch up don't, don't get hurt don't get too <laughs> close <laughs> so um upon further inspection of tower dive as a unit mm-hmm. we realized that our our in-depth analysis of games was boring and accurate not, uh, not not good not good <laughs> factual factually lacking yeah so instead of us breaking down the games which let's be fair that's not why you guys are here no you guys came for the trash talk exactly and you, you guys stayed come, for the handsome beards states and the hand jobs and the hand jobs <laughs> but and you know what maybe a little stinky pinky we're feeling yeah, we'll, we're feeling we'll, frisky I mean, we will throw you guys we'll let you know what happened because in case you happen to miss it We'll let you know that, you know, Immortals beat Energy. Oh, hot dog. Two games to one. That's a victory for Immortals. Yeah. I don't I don't care. 
I mean, it's technically a, a little bit of a victory for energy. It's like a, it's like a, like a moral victory, though. Yeah. Which, let's be fair, aren't actual victories. Depends on who you ask. If you ask energy, it's a victory. If you yeah. ask any, if you ask anybody else on planet Earth, it's not. See, depends on who you ask. Not, a, not a victory. Yeah. So I, I, and I, I don't need to go through and say that Phoenix One is a crappy team, or say that it's really surprising that. Are they team not in- good? I no, mean, they're bad. Who's... They're like all of the worst parts of Team Impulse. Oh, okay. That's like shame. they're like they're the bad players that were left over when Impulse sold itself. Right. I mean, they. I mean, I don't think anybody really expected them to come in and have a, a, a real strong opening start. Uh, uh, yeah. It, it's tough when you you know you buy your team a week before the LCS starts and then you get no chance to here's really the, get it going. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You flip that and you look at at. at Team Envy Us or Team Envy, whatever, right? It's Envy? Yeah, because Envy Us, I don't know if they're the same thing. Uh, it is Envy Us, okay? Envy Us is going by Team Envy, okay? Mm-hmm. Just making sure. That's the team that bought Renegade Spot. Okay. Um, and they are Seraph, Ninja, uh, Proxin, Nian, LOD, and Hakuho. Yeah, so they have all the best parts of Renegades, whereas uh, Phoenix best, One got all the worst the, parts of Impulse. Well, I, I guess you could say Ninja and Seraph are the best parts of Renegades, despite only being on the team for three and games. And Hakuho. Hakuho? Uh, Hakuho, yeah, Hakuho. Hakuho was on there for a little bit. And he was doing well. Yeah, well, he wasn't worse than, than Remelia. She was yeah. awful. Well, I mean, look. Awful. Okay, yeah. fair, fair enough. Not <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I tried to white knight it for a minute no, but e- even if i were to uh white knight harder than anyone's ever white knighted she would only respond with a creepy anime meme anyway so it's not and really here's the, and the here's time. the thing it has nothing to do with her being a girl no it has everything to do with her being not a good league of legends player a, a mediocre girl. player and someone yeah. with, without a lot of motivation to get better yeah girl boy fucking uh you know dog from mars it doesn't matter she was a bad league of legends player and a mediocre support that only could play two to three champions is it still a dog if it's from mars yes i mean it's not really related to the canine family you don't know that it's from mars it could be a martian oh, unless we're all martians but then we are not then none of us are martians oh shit we gotta that's a, that's a whole different podcast <laughs> Woo! We just we gotta get Neil deGrasse Tyson on for that. Yeah, one. we gotta get away from that. That'll that'll eat up the whole show. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one. So anyway, <laughs> Envy Us, who put this roster together, and you look at it, and you're just like, okay, they're good. Yeah. No, apparently they're really good because they're currently tied with TSM at the tops in the division. Yeah. Right now at four and zero. Well, the I season's eight, still early. Yeah, it's going into week three, but still they're eight and two in their overall uh, games. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for a team that came out of nowhere. I mean, Envious is an is a fairly uh, established organization in I, esports. I do have a question though. Who okay. are they against the first two weeks? Because that um, says almost more than it does their record. I will tell you. So let's look at that real quick. Because if they were against uh, Phoenix One, and if they they were against uh, maybe CLG, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying there there are definitely some weaker teams. Or some teams that are having a, I don't know a if tough you could start. Call, I don't know if you could call CLG a weaker team while you, they're having a rough start. Not necessarily start. a well, weaker team, but having a rough start. Okay, well, here, first of all, um, okay, this is week three. I mean, they're real, NVS's real test is going to come this week. Yeah. Uh, they play Immortals. Um, NV beat Apex. Okay. So uh, kind of a B team. They beat Apex 2-1. to one. Mm-hmm. They beat Phoenix 1, who's awful. So that one doesn't even count. Two, yeah, 2-0. Two oh. Now listen, you you have to beat who's on you. You have to beat who's in front of you. Yeah. You know you can't say oh sure. I mean in week one they beat uh, energy. Okay, and energy was looking a little a little rough for wear at the end and, of last split. And they beat liquid. Okay, so they have you know some I mean, strong out, wins and some less out, relevant wins. Outside Phoenix one, they've beaten teams that are good. I mean Apex isn't a bad team. No. Apex is a strong squad. Would you consider them a top tier team, though? As far as America goes, I mean they're one of the better teams right now. Okay. I mean, it, it, just standings. I'm, I know I'm legitimately asking. I mean, oh, do you, just yeah. based on. I mean, just based on standings, they're in, they're in sole possession of fifth place. So not really a top tier team then. 
Well, they're in the playoffs if it ended right now. But Yeah, but still fifth place. Right, but they're only a game out of second. Well, they're, third, they're only a game out of third because they're two and two, and third place is three and one. So they're so, definitely, they're definitely, they definitely have potential know. to be a good team. That sounds very middle of the road to me. Well, yeah, at at, at two weeks in, they're a good team. Mm -hmm. America is not loaded with dominating teams. I mean, and I don't even know if I'm prepared to say Envy Us is a dominating team. I'm but right it's now, tough to tell. So early. right, yeah, right now there's kind of the, the mishmash between three through six. You know, because you can't say, oh, well, Immortals and Cloud9 are elite teams, but Apex isn't. Well, because Immortals, they're only a game, there's a game that separates them. Cloud9 has a history of, of being very good. Right. And, and when Immortals history, ruffle and when, stomped an entire split. Sure. And when history um, it has anything to do with current stuff, then you just go ahead and let me know when anything that somebody did last year matters of what they're going to do this year. Well, it no, does. but you can kind of expect Cloud9 to make it to the sure. playoffs. Sure. And. Sure, and, and and I can expect my ass to blow flames uh, at any given time. Depends on how it's, hard you try. It's just never going to happen. You um, just gotta believe in yourself, man. I keep telling you this. You really sell yourself short. That sounds. That don't, sounds no. Don't no. let your dreams be dreams. Be yourself. That's just do it. That's what's really cool. Yeah, write that down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anywho, the the fact is, I I feel for that a new it, for a newer team, they're doing well. I've, and I feel that Apex is a team that can definitely. They're gonna be one of those teams that maybe they're not gonna finish top three, but mm -hmm. they're gonna be one of those teams that gives top three teams fits because they do have a strong squad. Plus, their top laner Ray pulled out tank uh, tank Fizz, and that was freaking amazing. That's not new though. Tank Fizz has been it, around. It, it is it is in competitive play because he rarely got seen played tank style in very in a very long time. No, it's been played tank style and competitive. Not necessarily, not the season. That's what I'm saying. Not the season. It hasn't been yeah. seen in a long time. Yeah. And people didn't think it was still viable anymore. Still viable. His on it's hits crazy. Totally viable. It's so stupid. And he totally kicked ass with it. And it was really tank fun Tank items to see. are so dumb right now. So dumb. Um, didn't Apex just lose their jungler, though? Um, or was, was Eve uh, a sub? Uh, let's see. Eve was a... He's not These are sense. things that we really should fact check before the show starts. Yeah, um, I mean, they're 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 jungler. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, Eve was Eve was splitting time in jungle with uh, Shrimp. It, okay, when well, I they still have Shrimp. Yeah. When okay. I looked at when I looked at the roster, he wasn't listed on it anymore. But that's because he was suspended. Right. But he was suspended in May for disciplinary reasons. Shrimp was. No, Eve, Eve was. was. And now he's banned for ten months. Eve was suspended in May, and then I guess. He was being penalized. I, I'm assuming that's what the suspension was, or what? That's what the when he was team suspended. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it had to do with the scripting thing. Probably. I could be wrong. I don't know if he's played since then, but um, I think I'm I'm you know I don't know I don't I don't know the I don't know I can't speak to his his you know um Moral the quality fiber. of his the quality of his person I guess we'll call it. So I don't know why he was penalized, why he was why he suspended by the team, and then and now he was we probably know why. caught scripting. He's probably doing some, he's probably doing some shit. Because yeah, listen, you're, you're if you're a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. It's all, yeah. you're always a piece of shit. Yeah, looking at you, Dardock. Yeah, look exactly. <laughs> you, you know, fucking kind of, dildo. Oh man, God. I talked. I, I I went I, I I went on him on for the solo on the solo show when I was in and yeah, it's like, dude. You know, you're a professional player. You're playing something that you're getting paid to do something that there's like hundreds of thousands of kids that would kill to get a chance to do. And yeah. you're a giant piece of shit. <laughs> so stupid. Like, come on, man. Just fucking grow He's up. He's got a fucking attitude problem. Although so Piglet many... does too. Yeah, Piglet refuses to learn English. Oh, God, there, uh, Liquid, uh, I just, you know, if I, I was I, a pro, I, do. Yeah, I don't think you could pay me to be on a Liquid. I bet you they uh, could. He you totally could. could. I, I mean, come on, I'm like, a fucking sellout. It's not say, even a question. Yeah, I don't think you could pay me to be on liquid. No, you I totally could. You really could. You could totally pay. Wouldn't me. even have to be that much. Just enough. Yeah, yeah just, so dumb. Just enough to take care of my bills. Yeah. And my, and now my child. But uh, TSM's looking pretty good so far. Yeah. Yeah. TSM looks really good right now. Yeah, they're finally starting uh, to come together. Yeah, and that really makes me hurt a little bit inside because that was brought up on the Four Ward show on who we think is going to win uh, the split. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had to begrudgingly say TSM. Yeah, well, we said it last split too just because 
their fucking team members by themselves are good. Yeah, but I think honestly, I think the switch of of Yellow Star leaving and then putting Biofrost as their it new was support, good. it was a good switch. I think it's a perfect move because I not that I think that Yellow Star was the problem, far from it, but I think it was too many strong personalities being put in one place at one time. Too many superstars. It was just too many cooks, man. There was you yeah. know, too many cooks. Too many, too, too many, many Jordans, cooks. not enough Pippins. Yeah, you know, in, in everybody needs the Tony Ku coach. Right. And they didn't have it. All they had was a bunch of superstars, and nobody wanted to listen to each other. I think putting Biofrost there, because I, I believe he's the shot caller. I can't say it with any kind of certainty, but I am going to assume he is. Yeah. You can and still I, kind of see them working out some kinks, though. Right, right, right. But I think that it's it's definitely eased the tensions because, you know, now you have, okay, Bjergsen and Doublelift. Mm -hmm. they're, your, they're your big personalities. Right. Then you have Sven Skarin, who's a big piece of shit, but he's your jungle. Not, not a personality. He has no personality other than being a fucking like asshole. <laughs> Just being a, an, an ass hat. He is a an ass that wears hats. Um, I always and, thought ass hat was an ass you wore as a hat. You wore as like is a it hat. a hat that you wear on your ass? Is that? It's have an I ass. been imagining you this wrong a, my you entire place life? A hat. It's you place a hat on your ass. It's a hat that goes on your ass. Yes, it's a hat okay. that goes on your ass. I'm glad we cleared that up. Yes. Um, <laughs> you were putting the emphasis on the ass. So yeah, ass. ass hat. Yeah, no, it's ass hat. I gotcha. <laughs> so, and then you have, um, uh, what's his name? Hanser in the top lane, who I like a lot because he, he quietly does his job. You know, he's like everything that Dyrus should have been. Yeah. Dyrus, you know... Is that, quiet is quiet in a sense is that he's monotone. He was a low maintenance, low econ top laner, but he still lost lane. Whereas Hanzer is a low econ, low maintenance top laner who can win lane. Who can win lane? Yeah. And who doesn't? And who, and who people don't constantly make excuses for? Um, nobody made excuses for me. Everyone made excuse. Every, every every TSM fan. I just wanted to play some League of Legends. Who, every every TSM fan who walked planet Earth did nothing but make excuses for. Die our run. Oh, die, oh, the only oh. reason die, the only reason Dyrus is 0 27 is because he got camped all game. You remember that one time he fucking killed that Korean in lane and he said, "Get the fuck out of my lane." That yeah, was and awesome. He pumped, and he pumped his fist. That was that was America right there. That was awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that the year that TSM won Worlds? No. Oh sorry. wait, no, it wasn't because they never did. That's right. Oops, oops. Isn't it bad when you can hang your hat on single kills? Uh, like you know, kind of. Yeah, like but that... at the same time, if I was in his shoes, I'd still be proud of it. I'd fucking i I'd, I'd I'd put that video as my intro on my YouTube channel. I'm sorry. I guess <laughs> I I guess I have something that that most League of Legends players don't have, and that's like you know delusions of grandeur. A sense of uh, no, a sense of self worth. Oh no, I have a and sense I, of I, self mediocrity. And I believe, and I and I believe that I can achieve better than the the mini the minuscule things I've done in my in my lackluster career. When you As, get to be Dyrus's age, you have to appreciate the little things in life. I've been Dyrus's age. <laughs> You're older than Dyrus. <laughs> yes, I've I've been, I've been at that age. Yeah. But it, 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 this is this it, this isn't about Dyrus. This is about League of Legends. His time has passed. Sorry. The sorry, fact sorry, it's okay. Dyrus. The fact is, um, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, the fact is that right now, TSM and Envy us are are sitting sitting in the catbird seat, as mm -hmm. they would have said in the in the fifties. Is that a thing? Catbird seat. Catbird seat. Yeah. Making that up. I swear I'm not. I'm mm -hmm. not clever enough to come up with something like All that. All right. It's see, see that I say that and you agree with it. All right, begrudgingly. <laughs> you're, right. you're right. You're not that clever. <laughs> <laughs> you got. You may have something there. <laughs> but uh, after that, uh, Immortals and C9 both sitting at three one. Mm -hmm. Not surprised. I'm glad that Immortals isn't flirting with perfection again, so that only so that they could completely shit the bed in the playoffs, and so we could both go on on that show. I told you so. Yeah, I'm also glad that C9 hasn't brought High back into their roster. Right? Yeah. Oh my god. I'm, I'm glad they finally won games with Bunny Foo Foo playing. So Thank they can't god. Blame, so they just can't blame all of their fucking shortcomings on him. Yeah. Which is just sad and pathetic. But, yeah, then you have Apex. And in the bottom half of, of NA, it gets a little dicey. I mean, mm -hmm. sure, Phoenix One might be the worst team ever assembled in Professional League of Legends. Ouch. I, I, I'm That's not. Harsh. Say, I'm not even saying it's their fault. 
They became a team like literally the day before roster lock. Yeah. What did they have to work with? They didn't even have Kiwi Kid available. He had already been picked up. Yeah, when you who do you pick up when Kiwi Kid's been picked up? Yeah, right. Like what? What is what's left? Uh, well, Coast. You just pick up Coast team. No, but... they. I'll tell you what's left. They've got. Hold on, I'm gonna yawn. Oh, excuse me. They've got Brandini. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I don't know what that means. They've got Zentinel. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pyrian, the guy who was the mid laner for uh, or Pyrene, whatever his Pyrene? name. Is. Pyrene. I thought he was a caster. No, that's Zyrene. Oh, excuse me. I, I, I think we call him Pyrene, but I think it's like Pyrian. Okay, I sure. I think is how his name is pronounced, but it doesn't they matter. They really need phonetic spelling. It doesn't make a difference because he was the mid laner for Impulse, and he's not very good. Whatever they, happened to names like, you know, Huck They have Machine. Slu- they have Slushy. Slushy 8? No, just Slushy. Oh, man. He's grown Do- up. Oh, it was Dodo 8. Slushy had an 8 in it. No, he didn't. Oh, well, he, when he was on Team 8, yes. Yeah. They all had 8. Slushy 8. Yeah. Uh, gate. They have Gate. What position is he playing? Uh, support. That's a mistake. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they should put they him have, in uh, they floating. Have, they have Mash, Inori, and Zig. That's their whole team. Got some real fucking bangers. They, they really scrubbed the bottom floor to put together, put together oh, a roster God. of more than five people. It is literally like... They're, I think one of those guys I played against in, in like a, my bronze promotions. Yeah. He wasn't even smurfing either. He yeah, was just no, trying would, to hit he, the, the qualifier he, so that he, he could be on with, a team. He was just working with me, you know, he was scrubbing along. And it's just like, you feel bad, but they're bad. They're a bad team. Sure. And at the same time, uh, you don't feel bad because they their jobs are playing League of Legends. Yeah. And you want to know what? I, I mean, again, when you only have so much time to put together a team. Yeah. This is what you get when you don't have a real organization. Yeah, it'll be tough if they get relegated, though. Um, they're going to get relegated. Yeah, probably. Ooh, I, I mean, let's put it this way. Last season, when we did our predictions, we both didn't think that Impulse was going to win a game, and they did. Sure. This team is worse than that team. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> this team, they, mag- they, um, they actually managed to... Compar- comprise a roster that is not as good and could not beat that impulse roster. I think it depends on where Gate would play. It doesn't matter, because it matters. Okay, <laughs> Gate's the Gate's the glue. Some might even say he's the golden glue that holds that's Phoenix what they need. One. That's what they, need. <laughs> they, they need golden glue. They need some golden glue. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Um, yeah. So so. Yeah, it's just not good. It's just not good. So, but yeah, like I said, so at the bottom, yeah, fine. Phoenix won, you expected to be at the bottom. Right. At least I did, and I'm sure you did. But then, it's, before that, you got that lock at six where t- the the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth place teams, which are all tied in sixth place, all are one and three. Mm-hmm. And it's like a who's who of good teams. Sure. Liquid, CLG, Energy, Echo Fox. Really? Yeah. These teams all suck ass right now. Well, I mean, it, to, to be fair, they're all tied. So. And right now, and right now, out of all of them, I think Energy is the only one who's even looked pretty good. One of them could be third. Uh, CLG had a, had had a few moments that I saw that looked okay, but they're definitely not looking like they did at MSI. I mean, they got shit on by TSM. Yeah, like those weren't even good games. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, somebody's I, got the yips. I don't know what it is, but maybe they. Uh... They think that they're, I don't know, maybe they're pulling what TSM did last season. They think that they're better than what they actually are. That could be it. Or uh, it could be, you know, someone stopped practicing. Maybe their scrims have gone to shit. I don't know. Well, or or they've the other teams just caught up with what their strategy is that was working for them that got them as far as it did last season. If maybe, you believe. Maybe the, Dar, maybe the Darshan split push strategy isn't working this maybe, season. Maybe, yeah. If you believe Reddit, it's all Huey's fault. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's, um, who is the worst fucking mid laner CLGs ever had? Yeah, that's well, that's okay because because last season everyone said that Yellow Star was the worst support in like the world in North America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You're assholes. <laughs> Fistful of assholes. Yeah, the one thing you can the the one thing you can be sure of is that anything Reddit says is like based on twenty percent fact and eighty yeah. percent bullshit. Yeah, and, and 100% I think I'm ge- machismo. And I think I'm being generous by giving it twenty percent fact. Yeah. So, 
Uh, but, but basically, so America's in a weird place right now. Uh, North America's in a weird place right now. Yeah, when you have like a five way tie for yeah, last and, place. Yeah, and you kind of, yeah, like, and it's a shit show. And, and it's just kind of, I mean, in, in one hand, I like to see that this team Envy Us is in first place because it's like new blood. Right. That's, that's not a bunch of fucking old ass players. Yeah, that that's cast, good to see. Cast offs from other teams. I'm looking at you, Immortals. Mm-hmm. Although not... that does make me nervous going into Worlds. Oh, because we have no strong team currently? Well, let's say Envy Us wins Summer Split and they're the ones that go to Worlds. Does that make you nervous, them being a brand new team? No, because they're not really brand new players. They're kind of new. I mean, Seraph, not a new player. Ninja, a little bit new to America, but mm-hmm. not necessarily a new player. Yeah, uh, there's two. LOD and Nian, they're not new players. Nian's yeah. been around the scene for a long time. Yeah, but Nian's Although also I, never been successful. I was, was going to say, here's the thing, though. Do I feel comfortable that those are my AD carries? Yeah. Not really. Although I like, I think LOD's got a lot of potential. He does, but he's still young. Yeah, but I think you know. he's got a lot of potential. Um, and then, uh, who the hell is their Akuko. Jungler? Akuko is their support. Yeah. And their jungler is somebody. You just said it a minute ago. It's, um, uh, did I? Yeah, you did. You went over their entire roster. Either way, uh... It's, 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 it's irrelevant you know, at the moment. These are not the superstars that you send to the world championships. But you know what? Maybe you don't send superstars to world championships. Maybe you just send good players. Oh... Uh... Boy, that sounds counterintuitive. If you just send the I, good... I don't want to say wrong because I don't feel like eating crow oh, later down. Proxen is their yeah. jungler. But that sounds like the opposite of maybe what you just one send does. A, maybe you send a team that plays well together. Yeah, sure, but also kind of superstars. At least, right. at least one. One right. superstar might be nice. Maybe I'm asking for a lot. Maybe you're asking for a lot, but maybe yeah. you don't need a superstar. Maybe you just need a team that plays well together. Like, um... Before Faker was the god of League of Legends, he was Faker the mid laner for SKT1. That's a good point. And then they won worlds, and then he became the god. I you mean, don't, you honestly... Don't, you don't start as god, you become god. I think that depends on the amount of worshippers you have. I and, think... here's, and here's the thing. I'm not saying that any of these players are going to ascend to the level of Faker. Yeah. But all it takes, and this goes for any sport, all it takes is one good run at the right time. Mm-hmm. It just takes everything to click, and maybe a bucket of raw talent, and a lot, of, and a little bit of luck, or a lot mm-hmm. of luck. Listen, you can catch any. You know, it's it's you know, it's it's like in the NHL. In the NHL, it's funny because, um, and in this season, this past playoffs that just ended completely proved that is that the ability for a mediocre team to ride an incredibly hot goalie can win you a championship. And the same goes for League of Legends, is that if you have your team and they're hitting, they're firing on all cylinders at the right time, you're going to win a lot of games. I mean, Immortals shit the bed because their team fell apart at the end. Yeah. Like, they they steered away from what was go- what was winning them games last split, and, and they've ended up, what, third place, fourth place, whatever it was, mm-hmm. not winning, doesn't matter. You know, and, and that's the kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, CLG got hot. Mm-hmm. Real hot got real real hot and rode that shit all the way through msi mm-hmm. so you know it, it definitely is a matter of, of of when you hit your stride and i mean in, on one hand you're like oh well they look really great now you know that you hope they kind of don't peter out at the end but on the other hand it's like maybe the they're just peter maybe they're just a better team i don't know it's too early to tell it's but very it's, early it's too early to tell but it is nice to see uh new teams that again aren't just full of old ass yes. fucking it, it is refreshing wash-ups. yeah it's nice to see a, a new organization who's actually established in esports mm-hmm. put together a team that is succeeding yeah and it's strange that it's taken them this long to put together a team <clears throat> i don't think it's that it's that they haven't I, I, that it's they that they couldn't before. I just don't think they had interest in it. I just don't think that they they want to. I mean, listen, most teams would have to go through the challenger scene, mm-hmm. and you know, a lot of pros don't want to play on challenger teams. Right. You get a lot of has been players, or a lot of never was players, or hopefully you get young talent that never got a chance. In this regard, they just bought their way in because Renegades was a, was a fucking organization <laughs> that was run like ass. Oops. So, you know, they managed to... Allegedly. Allegedly run like ass. Yeah. But, Erroneous. But they're not there anymore, so... Yeah. Something. So, yeah. whatever we think doesn't matter. According to Riot Games, they were run like ass. Yeah. 
Allegedly run like ass. Allegedly run like ass. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, they're in first place. Um, again, I think TSM is going to end up on top mm-hmm. just because I don't like to say that. And it doesn't give me any great amount of joy to have to say those words. Right. But that's what's going to happen. Even if they don't win the split, you think they're going to take the playoff? Um, probably. Probably. Yeah. I think that they're just they're uh, they're too good of players and they're they're a good team, and I do believe that they're going to, you know, do what everyone expects them to do. Just that's fair. A little bit later than everyone hoped. I think Team Liquid's still gonna wind up in fourth. Probably that yeah. seems like a safe bet. Yep, that's a safe that's a safe bet. Now, on the other side of things, in Europe. Mm-hmm. Where Europe has always been, it's it's so funny because everyone always feels like that that NA, uh, you know, the LCS is is more interesting to watch because of the drama. Yeah, but the yeah. thing about the, the, the but the thing about but EU is like there's a lot more drama because in NA everyone is like kind of nice to each other, mm-hmm. like everyone has something nice to say about each other, and there's very rare trash talk. Right, like true trash talk in Europe. That's because you get fined as soon as it happens. Right in Europe. There is so much more trash talking. Like, there's so little respect that some of these players have for other teams. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of great. I think it's kind of funny when, whenever you watch the Fischio cast, uh, if it's on a patch that he doesn't like, it's very clear. Yeah, and that's what I kind what of... he doesn't like. And that's kind of what I like a lot about Europe, about European, yeah. European LCS, is that they're, you know, yes, they're, you know, they... they they play the game hard, whatever. It doesn't matter. They talk a lot of shit. Yeah. And they they and and like like perks. Even when he's trying to be nice and and, and diplomatic, he's still saying like, "I'm the best mid laner in Europe." And mm-hmm. yeah, you guys are good, I guess. When you're not playing me, do you not get tired of that though? Ever? I know. I know. I love it. I love the trash talk. I love the fact that Vander. Uh, or Yankos, when you get interviews with him, first of all, Vander's the Terminator, mm-hmm. and and Yankos, you know, like he'll get on his interview, and be like, I went went for kill because uh, in between two towers, I didn't respect him anyway, and I <laughs> don't respect tower, but I respect tower far more than I respect uh, indiscriminate mid laner from team I don't care about because mm-hmm. we're going to beat them because we're better, God damn. And, and I'm not going to die, and that's Savage. the kind of shit, yeah, that's the kind of shit that they say. It's just like I love you because you're just brutally honest that you have no respect for this team. Mm-hmm. And in one hand, it's like, oh, I wish you were a better sports. But on the other hand, it's like, oh, good. You kind of bring a little life into the game. Yeah. And that's the kind of shit that I think is fun. And we've even said that. We, we wish League of Legends was kind of treated more like the WWE than it, than it is, you know, like uh, other professional sports, you know, where everyone is hugging and kissing and, and having fun and loving each other. Yeah. No, man, say, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to kick your ass. That's the stuff I want to hear. Yeah, uh, though if I have to hear Deficio complain about Cloud, Cloud Drake one more time, uh, I might fucking scream. Well, let's be fair, is that pretty much everyone hates the whole Dragon situation. I know, but we get it. Cloud Drake's no good. Who gives a shit? Cloud, it, it's, Cloud getting, Drake, it's getting too freak pun worthy of, fuck, move on with your life. Double, double Cloud Drake it makes you get to lane exactly 0.5 seconds Yeah, fast. No one cares about Cloud Drake. Okay, fine. No, they Cloud have Drake to take sucks. it because they need other Drakes. Cloud shit, Drake. another Cloud Drake. Okay, well, Cloud they have Drake to take Cloud it because they need other Drakes. What they should do is not tell you what the Drake is. You kill it, and then, like, it's and like something And you pops get the buff? It's like, brrr, boop, you got this one. Like, oh, oh, that's fun. Right? I think that would be interesting. Because then yeah. you don't know. Because then you're just killing a Drake instead of being like, okay, it's Earth Drake. I want this one. Okay, it's Mountain Drake. Or, uh, Earth and Mountain Drake are the same one. Okay, it's Fire Drake. You know what I mean? You're like, mm-hmm. okay. Instead, it should just be like, I hope this is a good one. Because <laughs> <laughs> it could be a great one. Yeah. It's like, Although oh, that does got... add in a bit of a, a pretty big RNG element good. to the game. Good. I don't think people want that. I want something that's that's not... That, that's not predictable because you want to know what it's just like it, the thing is is it makes the dragon fight mean more because you don't know what you're going to get you're like i need this dragon mm-hmm. and you're like the other team is going for the dragon we can't let them get this because we don't know what it is yeah i think it create i think in in regards to that rng would be okay it uh, i mean i think it makes a more interesting spectator experience uh, is, and I, and is, I hate, isn't but that I hate, what they're trying to do? I hate to use this buzzword, buzzword, but it does remove some competitive integrity. I don't think it removes competitive integrity at all because it's 
an objective and I don't think that necessarily every objective needs to be static and, and, and known. Mm -hmm. I think it the the thing that you're that you know is you want dragon and you uh -huh. want it to be a good dragon, but you're not guaranteed that it's always gonna be a good dragon. I think then it makes the fight mean more and it's like fuck, we didn't get it. And it's like what did they get? Oh it was cloud, thank God, okay good. We didn't get beaten this time. Hopefully next time it will be something Yeah, better. but what happens if you invest a lot of resources into getting a dragon and it ends up being a shitty dragon? Then you invested a lot of resources in a shitty dragon, and that See, sucks. and that feels bad because you played the game correctly by securing the objective and by right. you know but, not taking too many risks same, to get it. Right, right, but at the same time, you have now denied them from possibly getting a good one. You don't know that it was going to be that for them. Yeah, I don't know. I I think I still think it, I still think it keeps the same amount of importance on the dragon. I just think that it adds a level of uh, it makes the fights more intense because you want it because you don't want them to get it because you don't want them to get something good but you want to hope that you get something good. I don't yeah. know. I no. think it adds a little fun. To I it. agree it's a better spectator experience. I don't think it's great for balance. I think what they should do is just make all dragons, you know, be as worthwhile as every other dragon. You know, that way you still have the random element, but at the same time, um, you have don't a, have a shitty dragon that's not worth taking ever. If if you're if the thing is, if you're going to have multiple dragons, then it should be random, and you shouldn't know. Yeah. If you're going to have to know, then it should just be a static. That then it should have been the old way where it's like this gets you this, mm -hmm. this gets you this, this gets you this. Instead of instead of tying it to individual drakes. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, it's like you see Cloud Drake is up. You're like, okay, I don't need to go to, I don't need Dragon. Now. It's a non-priority. Yeah, I don't care. You, what you've done is you made an objective mean nothing now. Yeah, and the only reason to take it is to try and get the next one. Is to, and, and it, the thing is, if you have to get us to a certain point, the next one's just the Elder Drake. You see it stall games too. If the first Cloud, if the first Drake is Cloud, yeah, uh, there's like no team, it. there's no team fights for 15 that's minutes. What, that, and that's why I say adding the random element to yeah. it would make it a little more fun. And yeah, you know what? It may suck to get it, but the thing is, I feel like it would it would still it wouldn't kind of be as defeatist for 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 teams when they see Cloud Drake as your first fucking dragon. Yeah, it it would be like okay, let's. Oh, hope I it's get fun. it. Yeah. I get it. I just don't it, know if it's the most competitive thing to do. It might not be, but the thing is, is you have a situation. It's definitely where, more fun to watch. Yeah, and and the thing is, it's it's an optional objective. You don't need it to win. Isn't that kind of a bummer to where you can really only have one of the two things, a super competitive game or something that's fun to watch? But I don't but I don't think right now that that the way it is creates a super competitive situation because no, again, really. like like you said, if it's Cloud Drake as first, the lack of the lack of priority You just don't team fight. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And it's you're not really creating a more of a competitive environment. Well, you're, I think you're creating clear choices for the players. Right, but the thing is, is then you're removing an, an objective that they that Riot has tried to put a heavy priority on. Right. So I think the answer to the issue is to make Cloud Drake better, not add a right. brand new random element to the game. R right. But with the way Riot handles things is by making Cloud Drake better, they'll it'd either be, make it stupid and so OP. broken. <laughs> they'll either make it stupid and OP. Yeah. Because they don't know how to properly balance it, right. or they'll keep it shitty. Right. So I think if you keep it shitty. Then the RNG Random. element is then the RNG yeah. element is to is, is the the logical step. Yeah, you're if you're gonna that. say that we're gonna force one of our our drakes to be worth absolutely nothing in the competitive uh, uh, aspect of this game, then just make it an RNG situation. Yeah, that's so a then, bit of a bandit on a bullet wound. Fix I though. I don't know. I think that it's fucking all random. I I, I I I like that better. I think it creates team fights. It forces team fights. And then yeah, you know, fine if the fucking if you get it and then then the you know the price is right music plays. Blah, 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 blah. You know then what well, whatever. Hopefully the next one won't give us <laughs> big money, big money, big money, no whammies. Yeah, exactly. You know <laughs> when maybe, you get Cloud Drake, can we get the little whammy yeah. guy? Well, can <laughs> run around. Yeah, yeah, that'd be I, great. I'm okay, like I said, I'm okay. And especially the thing is, is having it be that, and then you also tra changed um, uh, the uh, the what's it called, um, Rift Herald to be a Rift Herald, with Harold, a yeah. Harold, yeah, Harold, yeah, Harold the Rift Guardian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they changed his buff to just persist through death and last twenty minutes, and you only miss one, and that's it. That's dumb too. Yeah, it is dumb. It's you've just kind of made. Because now, now Harold is just an objective people take when it's super safe. Nobody fights over it. 
No. And the and whole point of these objectives is to drive team fights. And literally, you're taking it not because you want it, just because you don't want someone else to have it. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, okay, so I take it. All right. It's done. Okay, we're done. Yeah. They've made objectives literally mean nothing. The fact that you could have Rift Herald and Cloud Drake up and then no one cares. Yeah, but if you, just, hit, if you get like one fire things. Drake, you win the game. Yeah, again. That's why so. random element. Random element. Whatever. I get it. I get what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, you know, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to make it more fun to watch. Yeah. At least that's something. Yeah, it's something. It's something. It's a step in the right direction, not just a step in a direction. Yeah. Um, I don't anyway, think the Elemental Dragons are going to make it past this season, though. I hope they don't. I think Elder Dragon will probably stick around. Um, The Elder Dragon, yeah. And you know what? Fine. Just make the Elder Dragon the only dragon, then. Well, I mean, I, I like the idea of getting a bigger dragon towards the, the game that multiplies the, your previous buffs. Here's the, th here's the thing. Here's the thing. Make Elder Dragon... Or just make the dragons get and make the elder dragon spawn at twenty five minutes mm -hmm. or thirty minutes and have there be no dragon at all. If because that's essentially what you're doing right now. Well, or, no, because just, or, it's or, only or, it's only no dragon if it ends up being cloud drake. Or take the buffs away from dragon entirely and just have it be global gold. Yeah, that might fix it. <laughs> just fucking that's, global gold. That's far more useful than a bullshit fucking buff in half the time. Yeah. Well, a quarter of the time. Well, whenever you decide to do it, time. Yeah. Anyways. It's just it's 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 just stupid. I don't know. I just the whole dragon situation is a point of 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 great contention for me because I do not like them. That's kind of dumb. Yeah, it's a dumb situation. But anyway, back to to the European LCS. European scene. European scene. G two still in first place despite the fact that they are the single most dysfunctional team I have ever seen. So it's like trying to watch my parents play League of Legends. It's like trying to watch my parents play against your parents <laughs> in League of Legends. <laughs> And it's, it's like it's if not... your parents and my parents were on the same team. Yeah, it wouldn't be a good team. Yeah, and then they also brought in but apparently uh, my dad's apparently they, new yeah, wife. Yeah, but apparently they are a good team because they're in first place. They're just good players. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, and what do they have? Except for Power of Evil. Power of Evil's not on G2. That's Origin. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, you're right. G, G2 is incredibly dysfunctional, yes. but still in first place. Because they have Perks, and Sven, mm -hmm. and Mithy and trick yeah they just want to win yeah they just want to win that's and, a team that's a team of players that just want to win games well yeah you well you you assumed that that was the case yeah but they go on vacation during important tournaments i know what the fuck is wrong with that i don't know i i don't think they realized that msi was an important tournament is what I, was my assumption or the team is just a fucking disaster it's internally just a bunch of teenagers playing league just a disaster internally yeah. but they pull it together when they have to if you yeah. accept at msi yeah well, um, apparently they didn't have to then i mean yeah g2 this week this past week they two owed splice that's uh, not saying a lot and they tied rocket that's kind of disappointing honestly i mean rocket's not a bad team but you would expect a team of g2's caliber to europe is in a really weird place because with the two game series that they have yeah there's a lot of sort of like Oh, this team is, you know, like oh four and oh. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like kinda of like some nonsense. It's like, oh, they've just tied games. And so, you know, G two is is three they haven't lost. They have one tie, so they're mm -hmm. three O oh, and one. But for some reason Riot prioritizes ties over losses, so it lists at three, one and oh. Apparently they haven't looked at any other sports uh uh win loss record that has ties in What's the it like in the World Cup? It's what do you mean? What's like what like the it? when they do scoreboards like that? Well, if you would not you would look at the World Cup. You would look at like the Premier League. Okay, whatever, same format. It, it's wins, it's losses, uh -huh. and it's ties. Oh, okay, I believe you. Yeah, you yeah. don't you don't I'm put not, ties. I'm not going to argue that. You yeah. don't put ties second. There is no sport on planet Earth that puts ties second. Okay, but once sure. but once again, this is a situation where, you know, Riot is just doesn't kind of know what they're doing, even in broad even in showing stats yeah it's just fucking retarded like who puts ties second because what it looks like is is that g that g2 is we just look at it at a glance it's three wins no one loss no ties but it's really three wins no losses one tie mm -hmm. but that's just stupid so they're assholes but anyway that's neither here nor there uh in second place you have uh h2k who 2 0 giants this week and Fnatic actually mm -hmm. wow yeah good for them they were they, they they are also haven't lost a game. 
So they're two zero and two. So yeah, and H two K is um, you know, now with Freeze, right? How are I, they looking I, with Freeze? They look good. That's good. They look really good. Yeah. I, I have I have high hopes for them. Is it Freeze and Kasing in the bottom lane? No, no. Kasing's on Vitality. It's Freeze. Vitality. It's Vander. Freeze Vander. Because remember, they're Odoamne, uh, Odoamne, Yankos, uh, Ryu, Freeze, and Vander. Yeah, it's so kind of strange. Really, I kind of think Ryu's the weak link on that team. And really, because Ryu's like probably the third best mid laner in America. Yeah, that's kind or, of interesting. Or, or, or in Europe, rather. Excuse me. Yeah. His play always just seems kind of stale. Well, he just because he just looks, he doesn't have any emotion at he's, all. Yeah, he's not. His play it shows in his play. It's not really inspiring play. But he's a really um, good he's midler. Solid. Yeah. No, he's an incredibly good midler. That's the thing is he's not flashy. He's just really good. Yeah. Um, third place, Fnatic. Now with Yellow Star back, they actually look like a team again. Mm -hmm. It sort of fixed all their problems, and you're gonna see all season long. Spirit might as well just build an apartment in bot lane because that's where he's gonna be. Why wouldn't you? Well, he's just I'm saying he's just gonna yeah. feed like they're just gonna feed reckless. Yeah. And it's gonna be beautiful to watch. And then shit just gets weird in Europe. It's like your top three teams are G two, H two K, Fnatic. It nothing kinda makes sense. Nothing surprising yeah. about that. Every kind of the teams you thought were gonna be up there. Then it's it's Rocket. Mm -hmm. No one saw that coming. I mean that team who the hell is even on Rocket? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. They're Parang, Airwalks, Betsy, Steelback, uh, and Rays. They got Steelback. Yeah, and Airwalks really. Betsy's Airwalks? okay. Betsy's, I guess. Uh, after that, you have Splice, who sucked last season. Mm -hmm. Real bad. Yeah, they're in fifth place. But again, team with one win. After them, you have FC Schalke, the the football mm -hmm. club. Yeah, they have one win. That's really it's really just elements. Is it one win one tie or is it one win? No, all of these team Rockets one one win You're... three ties. Sorry, I, I forgot to give the ties. Yeah, ties are important. Rocket is one win three ties no okay. losses. Okay. Splice is one win two ties one loss. Okay. Uh, FC Schalke also one win two ties no losses. Okay. Then you have Giants one win three losses. Who is on Schalke? Uh, they're just elements. Okay. Like, it's literally just Elements roster. Yeah. Um, this didn't load. But uh, where the hell did they go? These standings. Um, what did I say? So Sh Giants, yeah, 1-0-3. Oh, and, and Giants has nobody anymore. Right. Like, everybody on their team left. That's kind of a shame. That's yeah, a they, strong like, plan for the future. Like, ex Pepe left. Yeah. Uh, everybody. They got I, tired they, of losing. Yeah, they, the only player that's left from the team isn't even an original player. He was brought in late last season. Is yeah. the the uh, can, the uh, Korean eighty carry Son Star. That's a shame. Yeah, but they have like Smitty J, the guy who was kicked off of uh, of Dignitas for being an asshole. Right. It's good, good quality, good quality player you got there. Um. Yeah. After them, Unicorns of Love, who just looks fucking awful. Yeah. They, they lost just look, it. They just look fucking. They had magic beautiful. with their original roster. Yeah, they're it, just a bad. Gone. They're just a bad team. I think they might be an unorganized organization. I just feel bad for Vizachachi because I feel like he's a good top laner. He's a great top laner. Just yeah. on a miserable ass team. Here comes Chachi. Yeah, just on a fucking, just terrible team. Uh, then Vitality, no wins, three ties, one loss. That's that doesn't sound that bad. Well, yeah, but you only get one point for a tie, so yeah. they only have three points. Yeah. And the thing is, is they're a team who should be good. They should be good. With, you know, Cabochard and, and Police mm -hmm. and Kasing. And mm -hmm. even Kasing said, uh, you know, how easy it was playing with... Um, Kjarnan. At Kjarnan. And now not playing with him, it's kind of like, oh, this sucks. Yeah, it's tough. And they have Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck. Who just I don't have a great deal of respect for as a player. I don't know. Ever since, uh, you know, they did really well when they were Lemon Dogs. But uh, I think that was a perfect Storm team. It was. It was kind of like Unicorns Love. Um, and then and then taking it up the rear, and I would normally say carrying the rear, but because of how bad they've been, how disastrous they've been, taking it up the rear is Origin. Poor who Origin. Saw, who saw that? I know, this, right? This team finished fourth place in the world last season. Yeah. And they're last in the LCS. That's ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't know what happened when uh, 
ex Pepe hung up his hat, but the whole fucking shit fell apart. Well, the problem is that they're just not a disciplined organization. Yeah, and they're uncoachable. You have and players that refuse they're not, to try and improve themselves. Because they're not disciplined. Like, you know, love or hate so as, the guy does not get better. No. He may he has flashes of really brilliant play. But as far as a top laner go, if I'm starting a team, I'm not picking him. Oh, no way. There's no room for growth with Soaz. And there's just he just doesn't care. Yeah. I he's been, he's one of those players who has been so spoiled by success because of the players around him mm-hmm. that he thinks that he was actually part of it. <sighs> Maybe he had a hand in it. Like he Small thinks hand. he actually had a big role in the success of these teams. And he didn't. No. And I loved Fnatic. And I still love Fnatic. And I never loved so as a top laner. <laughs> I was always like, there's, there's, there is an anchor on this team, and I can assure you it starts in the top lane. And, again, and, and the thing is, is you brought in a player who's just the same way and amazing. Mm-hmm. Amazing is a player who thinks he's better than he is. And sometimes it shows it, yeah, too. Like where he had his really great, stunning plays. Yeah, he makes some great plays, but as a whole, as a jungler, he's in, he's exceptional at being not exceptional. Mm-hmm. He's just a an average player, an average professional level player. Right. Like but, there are there are plenty was, of other junglers. I think that was all good and fine, but they also had Peke, uh, Zven, and Mithy. Myth? Yeah. Yeah. To to kind of tow the rope. Right, and and it's very easy to look good. When you're playing with players that are all really good. Yeah. Now you're playing with less than good players, and it's exposing massive weaknesses in not just your play, but in your in your organization. Yeah. Because no one no one's approving. No one's coming together. They it looks like they have they have zero aspirations. Yeah, they're getting they're just getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's the opposite the of thing, what's the, supposed the, to happen. The thing is, is that they started off really strong, and they've just very, I, I can't even say slowly, they very quickly have degraded into a terrible team. Yeah, they fell to pieces. Yeah, and it's really it's, disturbing. It seems like a team culture issue to where you have, you had a team that wanted to win when you had uh, Peke's Ven and Mithy. You had three dominant players that really wanted to win. And then they got fucking fed up with the other members of their team kind of being, you know, lost a fair about it. And so they left. Yeah, Sven and Mithy want to win at any cost. Mm-hmm. And they realized that their, like, attitude and, and how they approach the game was completely different to the way that players like So as an Amazing approach the game. Right. And, and their solution was to leave. Fucking bail out. And look at that. They're in first place and Origins in last place. Who made the right decision there? Uh, non ex Peke. I tell you who I feel bad for is Hybrid, the former G2 support, who basically was just cast away because Mithy's a better support. I know. And now he's stuck in a last place ass I kind of feel bad for Emperor, too. Emperor left, though, because he wanted to. Yeah. He wanted to go back to Korea. Yeah, I guess. I don't really feel bad for Whatever. that. That doesn't Whatever. Make, that doesn't make me feel bad. But, you know, back to the kind of just the way the, the European LCS is is you look at it and, and you really don't know who's going to be first place. Probably not Origin. Well, I you know who's not yeah. Origin. But you look at it and you see, you know, G2, H2K, Fnatic, you know, even a team like, um, you know, Rocket or FC Schalke, even Splice could possibly surprise somebody. Mm-hmm. I think there's so much more parity in Europe than there is in America. I think America gets far more black and white as the season goes on. It's always been that way, though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's why I've always kind of found it funny that people thought that the NALCS is more interesting, despite the fact that there's a very clear divide between the haves and the have-nots. Yeah, the top four and the bottom. Yeah, whereas yeah. In, in Europe, it's a it's much more of a blurry line. It's more of a gradient yeah. than it is a flat color. Yeah, you have an eight-way tie until the, the last yeah, game of the season. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, it's just really... I always found it to be funny. It's like, oh, watching Europe isn't, isn't exciting. It's like, really? Because every week someone new is in first place. And also the games aren't as exciting usually. Yeah, well, that's because they, they I think they play a more calculated game. Whereas America, a lot of times, it's throw shit against the wall, see what sticks. Let's go! <laughs> Fuck it, just dive. Who cares? Yay! It's just, you know, it, it, it. the way Europe is, it's just, I guess it's a more calculated game. 
Whereas in America, it's like I said, you throw shit against the wall, just see what sticks, and everyone's like, just like runs like it's like little kid soccer sometimes. Yeah, it's like ah, chase the ball. You know, I mean, listen, that's how Immortals got to where they were all most of last season. Yeah, yeah, they chased the ball harder than everybody just, else. Just, just playing little kid soccer. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that. No, nothing wrong with that. Until you get to the international stage. Nope. And then, and then you find out there's a lot of things wrong with that. Yeah, and, and then, then you realize who's <laughs> good at soccer and who's Oops. not. Oops. Whoopsie. We thought we were good because we were playing not as good people or people yeah. that weren't taking it as serious as we were. I, I thought I was really good at soccer because I scored all those goals, but then I realized there was no goalie. So, hmm. well, bummer. Thank you. Bummer. B- major bummer. But still, anyway. Still get a participation trophy. Yep. Yeah, so, so moving on from that. Um, there's been some interesting, interesting news in the world of League of Legends, and that's news really time. what news time. Yeah, right. News, bum, 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 news, news, time. news, news. Giving you the news because that's what you want. You want our take on what's happening in your game. Yeah. And what's happening is for outside starters, the game, really. Outside the game, which is the really, which is really where the game is. Yeah. It's outside the playing field. Yeah. And for starters, so. Uh, I noticed last week that G2 is playing with a different top laner, Expect. Right. And I knew that going into the season, I think they were rocking like a six-man roster. Yes. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. You know, matchups and whatnot and, and, and give another guy a chance. And okay, cool. You know, maybe they, that would give them some kind of flexibility with, you know, maybe you can stick Kickus in at jungle and give tricks, you know, trick a day off, you know, because Kickus was a jungler. And, and, you know, you have a lot of leverage because Kickus played all over the place. Uh, no, Kikus is a whiny bitch and, and basically wants to leave the team because he doesn't want them to have a top laner that's other than him. He's just a fucking baby. And the Holy team, crap. And the team's decision was like, well, we made a promise to expect to let him come to America, live in our house, practice and get better and play. And we can't just kick him out. Nor- because Europe, you, not, because, not America. Or, sorry, I, I keep saying America. Yeah, Europe. Yeah. Because you're a giant baby. <laughs> and we never know when you're gonna have a tantrum and fucking fly off the handle yeah and i'm not gonna lie this isn't this isn't helping your case yeah the thing that y- you really have to read between these lo- the lines on these facebook posts that they're making you know but how oh no it's okay it was a mutual decision it's we not no bad blood like dude you fucking bailed on your yeah. team yeah it was totally a mutual decision he was like i want to i don't want to play and they're like good we don't want you <laughs> so it's totally mutual. a mutual decision. Both teams were in, both parties were in agreement. Neither of them wanted each other. I mean, who does that? Who Babies, fucking children gets up and quits their job because they have a, a, a competition peer and in competition that's working alongside them. And and that's that's kind of the point that we're gonna get to in a moment. The only point I kind of get from Kikus's perspective is that it took away from his scrim time. Fine. That's... Be, be the better be the better player and you don't have to worry about being benched well that's true but they're always going to scrim i think uh expect right they have to they have to scrim with them otherwise there's no point in playing them so i kind of get that it's taking away his scrim time i guess i but don't know at, at the i don't think they're always time... just going to scrim with expect because they're going to want to work with 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 yeah uh, no sure but let's say spell. you know you're scrimming five games two of them are going to expect that, that those could be your two games to scrim as well I guess I don't know. I I, I kind of see that. I, sure, I get it. I, I don't agree that. with it, but I but get being it. A, but being a team player is making sure all players are ready at all times. Yeah, and also fucking do some other shit, man. Fucking take a break. Yeah. You know, watch it's... watch expects games. Yeah. And see where you can be better. Or or maybe help him get better. No, fuck that, man. That's a competition. Eat if anything, some... you should be cutting that bitch down. Eat some fucking shit, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just, you know, it was just ridiculous. I read that and I was just like, really? This is what this is where we're at. This is the drama. So stupid. This is some bullshit. He's going to be he's going to get hired, but if I was an org, I would definitely think twice. He's going to get brought into a, he's going to get brought into a shitty organization though. He's going to br- probably be brought in as a ringer and, you know, hopefully in America. Yeah, in America. And he's going to choke and they're going to be like get out and his career is going to be over yeah sorry man sorry man you pissed it away you had a chance dude you played in the first place team and you pissed it away because you couldn't fucking grow up you got upset that there was a little bit of competition yeah you got upset that they brought in another person the thing is they were they're always able to do this 
having someone on contract already didn't change the fact that you're always you know, being yeah. chased by the newcomers coming in. Yeah. If they don't like how you play, they're just going to bring somebody in to replace you. Yeah. Here, they just had just had a backup plan. Yeah, you just knew about the contingency. Yeah. And that's that's apparently working because they haven't lost. At least with that, you know what your competition is. Yeah. You know exactly who you have to be better than. And you can size it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's just Kickus. And, and and listen, I've never loved Kickus' personality. I think Kickus always thought he was a lot better than what he was. Right. And he's a fine player, but... He's too ham. Yeah, and he's and he just plays dopey champions. He kind of reminds me a little bit like Hooney. Where it, when things are going bad for him, yeah. it doesn't matter. He just keeps bashing his head against it until he, it starts he, to he go play, well. He has, he has one style of play, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's goofy, dumbass play. Sorry, Kickus. Um, we're... We already we already mentioned it, but Eve got banned for yeah, scripting. For fucking scripting, Jesus Christ! It's like, you know, it's it's sort of like on the same par with 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 being suspended for being an asshole. Yeah. Why? Just, just don't. You're a pro. Yeah. You have why do salary. professionals? Why do professionals feel the need to do dumb things? Fucking like greed. they're not going to get caught. I know. At least if you're going to get caught doing something, be it, have it be drugs or something fun. <laughs> something so, no one cares about on a professional level. Scripting? You fucking nerd. Yeah, but he only got 10 months. Well, he, yeah, I mean, that's a long time. It's a long time for... He's out all sport. season. But that's and, the minimum. Yeah, because apparently he worked with Ryan. Which, I mean, that means somebody tattled on him and he was like, you caught me. You got guilty as charged. Yeah, I scripted the shit out of it. Yeah. My Instead bad. of trying to hide it and be like super weird in the Skype messages, yeah, right. Be be totally evasive about yeah. it. No, not evasive at all. This guy, fucking, oh, what a wiener. It's a um, dopey wiener. He's just a dopey floppy cock. <laughs> <laughs> Man up, hide, hide from the fuzz. Oh god. Um, the, I think the biggest news of it all, though, is that Rush is back in South Korea. Yeah. That's the biggest one. I think the more, more most recent of all of these, and the most uh, pertinent when it comes to changes within the scene, right? Well, because so so Rush went back to Korea because he was playing on the C9 Challenger team, and then decided he didn't want to play on a Challenger team anymore. Right, rightfully so. A guy who has been considered one of the best junglers in North America, to be like, hey, we think you're great, but we're gonna put you on our Challenger team. Because we have other imports that we'd rather play over you. That's gonna feel like shit. Yeah, um, and and it's like you, they're replacing you. We're replacing you with a guy who stopped playing and wasn't really great in his last season. Um, but yeah, so it's because our mid laner finally decided to play, and we're picking up a different top laner. But really, ultimately, it's not your fault. It's just because Riot's changing it's, the rules. It's not you. It's me and it's Riot. Not you. So they replaced him with contracts because he left. Mm -hmm. But really, the bigger story about that is that the reason is because, as I said, Riot extended the residency rule to four years as opposed to three. Because what was going to happen is at the end of this season, Piglet, Impact, uh, Ryu, um, who else? Piglet, Impact, Ryu, Rush... And I think one other player specifically. Oh, and Kane. Kane were all, were all off the books. Right. They they're considered residents or, they were or being, North American players. They could claim North America as their as their home. Mm -hmm. Their as their playing home, and then those teams could pick up another foreigner. Right. So then you could theoretically, you know, bring another Korean or a European or whatever it is to your team to improve your roster. However, right. Riot, in their ridiculous fear of foreigners in intruding on their soils. I don't think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. We have two fairly different point of views about this, which I, I think I, is kind of okay. rare on for, for Tower Dive. I think, here's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is that it started off, they were like, okay we need residency rules and it was because of the whole um uh what was that team that came over from china uh Why am tip I... impulse yeah but the, the, before they were impulse they had a team name um Quantic? no that was that was loco's team yeah it's not them oh what the 
fuck was their whatever s- team their name was before Impulse. Yeah, whatever they were before Impulse, the um, the all Chinese team. Yeah, why the hell? I, I really want to remember what it is. LMQ. 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 Right. Thank you. It would, it would have driven me absolutely insane if yeah. I didn't think of that. So LMQ. They're, the reason they did is because the whole LMQ thing is that they an entire team came from China to America mm-hmm. and went to the Challenger scene. Bashed got, the Challenger scene to pieces. Blew, blew through the Challenger scene, went to the went to the LCS and played really well. They In the beginning of that split, they were... Just raffle stomping everything. LMQ yeah. was the team to beat. Yeah. Because they were pro level players playing against amateurs. Yeah, first. but they were they were yeah, in the challenger team, but they yeah. were they were a B team in China. You know, they um, weren't they yeah. weren't they weren't doing great. No, they uh, were an okay they, team. They, they saw were, the money available in North America. They, they were basically RNG's sister team. Yeah, and they saw how easy it would be for them. To come in or, and establish not themselves. Royal, not RNG Royal Club. Before before they were RNG. Before they became Royal, yeah. Because yeah. before they became RNG, it was like Royal yeah. Club, whatever. And yeah, so so Riot in, enacted these rules of of uh, these residency. Rules. Yeah, the three fifths compromise. Wait, yeah. no, that's not it. Two fifths compromise. Two fifths. That's worse, I think. Right. Yeah. You're only two fifths of a person. <laughs> um, so you could only have two foreign born players. Yeah. Until they became re- residents, after and they, two and they years. used air quotes after after no after three years. Three years. The original was three years, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, fine. I so, think. Let me just preface this whole thing, but I think that was fair. I think that it's, I it's, think that it's not. Yeah, I think fair. that was fine. Three years, I think, was good. It gives it was fine, and and you want to know what? Everyone agreed with it. Yeah, it forces. <laughs> foreign players to establish res- residency for and one have st- and they have to stick around and it, and it forces teams to just not be you know flip-flopping players it, constantly. it also gives uh teams competing against them to also raise their skill level when better talent is brought in exactly yeah and i am 100 percent okay with that i'm now, good with that three years later after this rule was enacted basically because a lot of players were grandfathered into it before it mm-hmm you know, players like Bjergsen and stuff were basically grandfathered before this rule was in. So it really only affected the players like Piglet, Impact, you know, the ones who were all affected. Rush honey. Right, right fucking now. Yeah. Now, all of these players are affected and are about to come off the books. And what does Riot do? They extend it. Yeah. To a fourth year. For no real reason that they can give other than it's kind of like uh oh we better make this longer because shit is about to get weird again yeah i don't the thing is i kind of get where they're coming from right but it it's also by moving the goalpost like this uh one they're not helping anybody it's not it's not it's not contributing to any new talent coming in from the challenger scene uh, two, it's kind of fucking up with teams playing rosters. Yeah, you can't just do that. I mean, you can, but yeah, this, they're, they're, you can't just spring this on these teams. Like, by the way, this is what we decided yesterday, so this is going to be a rule as of right now. I mean, I'm, I'm sure some teams had at least some notice, but I, I doubt they had as much notice as, as required as to replace a player on, a, on an A team. Yeah, and here's the thing. If, there's no guarantee that after next year they're going to be like, Oh, well, you know what? We're going to make a five now. Yeah. Because the thing is, is now you've just proven that your governing body is about as impetuous as a four-year-old yeah. and about and about as impulsive as, you know, as a, a, a teenager with their parents, you know, charge card. Yeah, if they were changing, or they did change the rule, but since they were changing the rules, they should have made something that's pretty much set in stone. Yeah. Right. If they're going to make it four years, it should be four years until League of Legends 2 comes out. And here's the, and here's the thing. If you're so afraid of players coming in and players going other places and there being an exodus of one, uh, uh, you know, from one region to another, then just don't, then just don't allow it. Just, just right. Have just, the rule, the just, rule is only two imports. Have the rule. You can only have two imports. Yeah. That's it. The end. I'm Game okay over. with that too. Yeah. If you're going to make a rule, then, you know, the thing is there needs to be con- some concrete to these rules. Yeah. And there's not. And it's just a typical, and I, I, I don't, but do enjoy 
uh, of bashing Riot's decision making. But the problem is, is that it just it's so head scratchingly retarded. Don't say retarded. Like the, the things it's, that they it's offensive do. Offensive to retarded people. It is offensive to retarded people. I'm comparing them to Riot. Yeah, that's what it, I'm saying. That's the that's the yeah. offensive part. It's just so head scratchingly ridiculous that you look at the at the decisions that they make and they they either seem so knee jerk mm -hmm. or like, like it's, you're... it's just bad business. I mean, it's hard enough to get a visa to to you know work for a foreign team mm -hmm. uh to yeah, and then, and be moving and, the moving the end game like yeah. this and let's be fair they don't help make it any easier they i think they probably try to help there's, really because it, there's because not a lot they can do because every situation it, it just doesn't seem like riot is lifting a finger to do anything and it's always the teams well, look, that are there's only so much that you can do with with whatever embassy you have to work within Right. Well, then they need to have established very clear rules on how things are going to go. Absolutely. I agree. And and, and it doesn't feel like they're doing that because they're just leaving it up to the teams. Yeah. Although you, you've mentioned in the past that you would prefer no import regulation. I have no problem with there being no import regulation. Yeah. My thought process is from a traditional sports standpoint, whereas uh, if you improve the quality of the players around you, you improve the quality of all players that are competing. And if you're going to allow, uh, if, if, you want the pro if you want to push a product to be a spectator sport, and ultimately that's what they're trying to do with esports as a whole, not just League of Legends. But if you're going to push this as a spectator sport and you're trying to legitimize it in the eyes of, of the general population, of, of sports watchers, I guess we'll call it, then you're going to want to be putting the best product forward. And the best product forward isn't 10 uh, uh, shit-eating dickhead teenagers picking their nose and flopping around a, uh, uh, you know, a, a digital field, mm -hmm. whereas you go across the pond... Uh, a little down the road and you go to that little island of Korea and you have it being the most mechanically efficient style of play that you've ever seen. And if the only reason that you want to keep the Americans in professional league of legends is because you're worried that it's just the, that the world championships is just going to become a Korean show match. Yeah. Which is completely a logical fear it's to a valid, have. It's a valid fear. It's, it's not an invalid fear, but at the same time, is it really going to be anything other than that? Has it been anything other than that for the most part? No, but there's also no chance of it ever becoming anything other than that. At times, has it felt like there is a chance? That's the real question you need to ask yourself. You're afraid of it happening, but right now the chances of, of an American team winning is been so completely infinitesimal that you're like, okay, well, the final's going to be, if it's not a Korean team, it's going to be a Southeast Asian team. Mm -hmm. But the I, so solution to that is not have a Korean team from North America compete against a Korean team from Korea. No, and I, and I, and I get that. I'm not saying that that's the solution. I'm just saying that. But the, that's, what w that's what would happen. Right, but the, just, but the thing is, is that it's just, it's, it's no difference. You know, I mean, American teams have barely gotten out of group stages. Because you know, you know what would happen as soon as if if, if all regulation was taken away off imports, right. you know what happens? Uh, fucking Razor buys the Rocks Tigers. They become Razor Tigers with actual sponsors. They move them to North America. They fucking raffle stomp everyone here's without the, even trying the, that the hard, thing. and then come Worlds because they never really had to try that hard in North America. Right. They get raffle stomped by Koreans again. Right, but here's the thing: is that that isn't you. You bring up an interesting thing when you say, "Oh, Razor comes over and buys a team." Well, now you're talking about potentially getting real sponsors because they're sponsoring teams that are good. Razor's already got esports sponsors. I I know that they I mean, sponsor stuff. Really, saying, what you what you would want would be like uh, Chevrolet buying a team. I think you'd probably be looking more again like like pertinent sponsors. Where you would where you would say more like um, well legitimacy is all in, is in lifestyle type sponsors stuff that regular people well, use big money, not big, just, big, not big just gamers sponsors. like you know like Pepsi or Coca Cola yeah or you know or Nike or Sam, stuff like Samsung. that Samsung <laughs> yeah or like what they have in Korea like Samsung yeah. or Jin Air yeah you know there's an airline <laughs> that's that's what you're looking for and that's that's what would happen right oh, that, that, that's not what happened Steel Series would fucking buy a team too. 
Yeah, sure. And here's, like I said, Steel I'm, Series I'm, I'm not necessarily saying I don't think that there should be no regulation. I just feel that the best players should be able to play. And yeah. I just feel like America uses residency rules as a crutch to allow mediocre players to keep their careers alive. I, I don't know it about allows, that because... It, it, it allows for a player like Kiwi Kid, who's a fa probably a fantastic person, fun, an enjoyable personality, great for the game as an ambassador. But as far as play on the field goes, the dude's career is simply being allowed to persist because other teams aren't allowed to bring in a foreign support to replace him. I don't know if, if that's true, because I think the best players are already playing. They're just not playing in North America. Right, but let's be fair. People come to North America to get paid. They come to North America to get paid and because it's easy to win. Yeah. You get it, a, When you come to North America as a star fucking player, you don't have to win. You're just there to be a... Look at Piglet. I was, just saying, I was about know, to say, look Piglet's at Piglet. fucking got it made in the shade. He doesn't give yeah. a shit. He's been fourth place... Well, that's actually not Ever. true because Piglet did say that the whole reason he stays in America is because he wants to prove he can win here. Yeah, he's not doing a great job at it. Well, let's be fair. They but haven't done a good it's job not like they're him. ever going to cut him either. They haven't done a good job around him. No. But at the same time, he could choke for an entire split and they might bench him. They're not getting rid of Piglet. No, they're not going to get rid of Piglet. And, and they can't bench him because he is by far their best player. Yeah. You look at their roster. He's by far their best player. So, and and he, the best team that they had was the first year that they had Piglet, and all they did was blame all their woes on him. Yeah, so I, I don't think the issue is is having imports come in and kicking out the old guard. I think the real issue is people think that they have to have the old guard, whereas there is talent in the challenger scene. No, I, I agree there is talent. And that's the, the problem is the entire mindset that a lot of these teams have to young talent and that they just don't give it a chance. Or they're on a bad team that makes the LCS, they get fucking raffle stomp for an entire season and mm -hmm. people don't think that they're any good right. because they were put on a bad team at with terrible odds. And like no scrims and, and yeah, no internet and, and, connection. And, you know, and, and, and no house and it yeah. was like, oh, you know what? Well, this is what happens when a 13-year-old kid buys a League of Legends team because his parents died in a tragic plane crash and he got all the, you know, the insurance money. Yeah, real sorry about that, Tom. Uh, yeah, you know what? It, it, it sucks. It really that. is a tragedy, but come it's, on. These, these yeah, are people's careers and livelihoods yeah, that you're you should, messing yeah, with. Yeah, you shouldn't be able to run the team because you don't At even. At least hire an accountant. You know, like, right? You get it. You're grieving, but come on. This is business. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a big idiot. Congratulations. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I just really feel like it's just, a, it's, it's just an issue where Riot is reactionary instead of proactive. They shouldn't have moved the goalpost. Uh, and how many... It's not a lot of players either. It's like eight players that this yeah, it's, affects. It's, it, the thing is, is, it looks like... The, Riot can sit there and they can try and package this decision any way that they mm -hmm. want. What it looks like is we don't want these teams to import other players because that's what they're going to do. Yeah. Like, they're looking at C9 going, they just picked up Impact. Impact comes off the books next season. They're going to have Rush, Impact, and Jensen all on the same team. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to have Bunny Foo Foo and Sneaky. And, oh, man, we can't allow that. And a year. Yeah, another year. And, you know, and it's unfair to a player like Rush. Yeah, it's totally unfair. Who puts in the time and he signs a contract with a team under the guise that, okay, I'm told that this is how it's going to happen. And I'm fine playing in Challenger season for a split because, you know what, next season when, when Impact can claim this is America as his, as his home, then it'll be me and Impact and Jensen and Sneaky and Bunny Foo Foo and we're going to fucking win the LCS and then we're going to go to Worlds and, oh, wait, they added a year to it. So my fucking career is screwed. Yeah, that's the issue is that he had already signed a contract and he was already prepared to play and then they added a year to it. If... Uh, there was like no time requirement, Halfway and it was a always a two fist rule. You know, he would have been able to find a team. Here's the th here's the thing. You can I have no problem with them saying it needs to be four years now. Then it needs to be to, to according for people coming in now. Right. It has to be absolutely. Have to think, no, I agree you with have that to too. Grandfather, every single player who's was there when it was three years, they should still have three years. Yeah. It should not be pro. You know, you're not prorating this shit. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Well, you, it, we, it was three years last year, but 
now it's four. Yeah. So sorry. So we're, we're keeping your security deposit. Get out. Yes. Sorry. It, this is how it works because no other place on planet Earth is allowed to do that. Yeah, you're not up. allowed to do stuff like that. It's when when people make changes like that, you're grandfathered in if you were already there when the change was made. Yeah. Like if I have health insurance at my company, it's like you can have health insurance. You know, you can uh, uh, sign up for health insurance after you've been there for six months. And then I'm there for, for you know, nine months and mm -hmm. I have health insurance. And then they say, you have to be here for a year to get it. They they're, take not gonna, away your they're not going to take away my health insurance. Yeah. They're going to say, you were here, so you get to keep it. But anyone who starts from now on, it's a year. Just like anyone who's, any import who comes into a team from now on, it'll be four years. All of you people that were here three years ago, you put it's, in your still, time. it's still three years for you because if we did it that way, that would be super unethical. Instead, Riot chooses to be unethical. Yeah, that's that's the ridiculous part. It's that they're they're worried about the ethics of the situation, so they pick the most unethical answer to go with. Yeah, they 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 went with the most reactionary, childish, unethical, ridiculous thing to do. That really, if any of these players had half a brain in their head, they would hire a fucking lawyer and sue the shit out of them. Sure, because they have total grounds. Because you have written things saying this is what the rule is mm -hmm. and then they decided to change it halfway through an entire season yeah and just be and here's a fun fact just because something's in the terms and conditions of a contract that you sign doesn't necessarily make it legally binding no uh if it's against the law it's against the law it doesn't matter if you sign a contract yeah and and the thing is is, is like i said i feel like and again this is what comes from from these players sort of having no union and no representation and mm -hmm. no real anything is that a team's not going to fight for that no because then that puts them at risk so you have these players that need to be able to fight for themselves but because there's no real representation and the only people that are quote unquote fighting for them are their team which i mean let's be fair c9 isn't lifting a finger to do anything i right mean now. could you imagine what it would cost to sue riot though that's that, but, that's but another the, glaring but, issue but but here's the thing the I mean, I don't pretend like I know a lot about the legal system. I'm sure I could find out. I have a couple of friends that are lawyers. Well, now, yeah. But here's the thing is I feel like this case is a slam dunk. The problem is there's probably something signed that uh, waived their rights to sue in court. They would have to go through mediation. Right, which was another mo which is another reason why you should have lawyers, yeah, and you should have an agent because no one in their right mind would ever allow that because then you're basically saying that they can change anything they want, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, it's pretty common to waive your right to sue someone and have to go through mediation um uh, that that that's fairly common, but at yeah, the same but time the most is, but, companies but the thing is is that this isn't a situation where it's just kind of like a grievance with. Yeah, um, it's not like it's this not is, like they you know took away your coffee maker. Yeah, this is a and you're major off at HR for shitting yeah, on your desk. This is a major issue. This is changing an entire uh, a policy that affects every single non-national player for their respective region. Yeah, and affects their careers. Exactly, and that's a huge thing. And to say. Just let you guys know, it's four years, no longer three. Wait, whoa, wait a minute. No, 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 no. For me, it's three because I was here when it was made three. Yeah. And I waited my time. I did my work. You know, I, I did what I had to do. And now I'm supposed to be able to reap the benefits. And you can't change that on me. Yes. Yeah, so you go tell rich Mr. Candy Bars to shove it. Yeah. So you want, you know what? You go back and you tell uh, Trindamir and Rise that they can take their four years and stick it up their ass. I am going to stay here and I am going to play with my team. Mm -hmm. And if you have a problem with it, then you can talk to my attorney. Yeah. And 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 here's the thing is I feel like Riot um can feels that they can do these things because none of these kids no one's gonna are, do it. are able to uh, or 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 are willing to to do that. And the moment somebody does, I feel like Riot won't know what to do. They would back down. Yeah, I think yeah. it would I, I first of all, the PR nightmare that it Oh would my be. god, yeah. It'd be a disaster. I mean, could you imagine if, like, the general public of anyone who knows anything about, like, sports and law all of a sudden is brought to light? Because let's be fair, Riot, you know, Riot is a huge company, and League of Legends is a game that millions and millions and millions of people play worldwide. But as far as, as the general public goes, 
A lot of people don't know shit about this game. And a lot of the player base doesn't actually pay attention to the pro scene. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is is, is a lot of people don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if you put this to light all of a sudden, you know, people will be like, wait a minute. And they'd start looking into things and be like, wait a minute. This is dumb. This is dumb. This is illegal. Yeah. What it's is going dumb. on here? It's yeah, all fucking dumb. You know, it would be like, wait a minute. How is this company even allowed to do business like this? And I feel like there would be all of a sudden a lot of things that would come to light that Riot may not want no. to come if, to light. If somebody actually challenged them on the issue, they would immediately back down and retract I, I, all their decisions. And they'd be like, oh, okay, maybe we're not you that rash. they would retract. Not that they would retract. I do believe that they would do a settle out of court situation. I don't think it'd be it too. I, I feel like they would definitely be like, look, we're not going to, we don't want this to go public. We don't want to our name dragged through the mud because let's be fair. It's big corporation, big company versus teenager who just wants to maintain his career, who mm -hmm. did nothing wrong. It's not like you're fighting against somebody who did something wrong. Right. All he did was want to play in America. What do you and think that payout would be? I doubt it would be very big. I'm not talking. I don't think the payout would if be. If they were to settle. Um, $100,000. It would Maybe. probably, I mean, it would be a decent payout. But the thing is, is, is Riot would have to pay it or have their name dragged through the mud and mm -hmm. look like the bad guy. Yeah. They would, because what's their argument? Oh, well, we don't want... We were worried about too many Koreans coming we to were, America. We, we, we were worried about, about too many international players coming in and ruining the chance that Americans have to play for money. Yeah, uh, that your sounds a lot like cronyism. You, yeah, your, your argument is really bad. That's a real bad argument. And so, and then you're saying, looking looking from the outside in, uh, that sounds like you, you look really like a racist bad. company. Yeah, <laughs> you look like a racist, bad nationalist, like like a Trump run company. And, and like you're trying to the rig the World Series so that America has a better chance. Exactly, yeah. that's all it looks like. And so then what you're saying is you're calling something a World Championship that's not really a World Championship because you're not giving everyone a fair chance to play in it. Yeah. And so, so then immediately everything you do looks like fucking clown shoes nonsense. Mm -hmm. And every, and then all of a sudden now people start going back through all of this stuff and they'll start reading into things that are, are that have happened in the past. And it's like, oh, look at this guy had his entire his mother threatened. Yeah. By, what did you do about that? Oh, nothing. Um, oh, okay. This guy. Uh, oh, he was suspended without any actual evidence. Oh, okay. So what kind of organization are you running here? Yeah. This if is you, just... you look at the original contracts, and it, yeah, it, this it's was written so in thick. And it's like players aren't allowed to stream other games. Players aren't allowed to do yeah, this, and none of it was enforced, but it was in there. Yeah, you start going through, and you have real lawyers digging through this shit, and you're just like your whole entire argument is baseless because you look like a company that's run by a bunch of 10 year old idiots. And all you had to do was fucking not change the rules. Yeah. All you have to do is, 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 is grandfather. You can change the rules all you want. Oh yeah. And just grandfather. Just grandfather. Yeah. Though. That's it. That's all you needed to do. And kind of the interesting thing about that is that, uh, slowly opens the throttle to more imports too. Like if you want to talk about raising the skill stealing of, of the North American scene, slowly bringing yeah. in better players is a way to do it. Yeah, you're you not... Can't just, you, you can't just dump in 32 Korean yeah, you're not players. Opening a, yeah, you're not opening a fire yeah. hose. You're trickling water. Yeah, that's... You're like, okay, you have one. You, or you, now you have two. Okay, in, in, in a couple of years, then now it's going to be three. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But And now that it's been, you know, three years, your other players around those, uh, the ringers, have gotten better, and maybe it's not worth it to import anymore. Exactly. Or you've had time to develop new young talent. Yeah. It's just uh, it's it, ridiculous. It, it's just it's infuriating because it just comes across as such a stupid and petty decision. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, all right. So we have a new segment that we want to try out. Yes, we're gonna see um, if this is funny or not. We're gonna see if this is funny or not. If we enjoy it or not, and if you guys most mo most importantly enjoy it. Yeah. So it's called "If I Could." If I could. If I could. It's the opposite it's, of never have I ever. It's better. Yeah. We're not going into the closet and, and are going to make out for seven minutes. Oh, What's damn going? It. Damn it. What's going? Next episode. Maybe. We'll see what happens. It, basically, the, 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 the format is going to be, um, like I said, it's called If I Could. And you get two minutes to say anything that, you know, if you could yeah. within the confines of League of Legends. Sure. 
You know, it's not like if I could be an astronaut because nobody cares about that. Seriously, if I could be an astronaut, I would totally do it. There you go. Yeah. So you get two minutes, um, and I think the time limit is arbitrary. Um, right. I'm gonna try and I'm, I'm gonna try and keep keep hard. Okay. Because I feel like some of these are gonna be kind of fast, so we're just gonna be going back. Okay. And forth. It, 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 we'll, we'll make it three minutes. Oh, yeah. okay. Never mind. Whatever. We're just gonna say it and we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll we'll just go with it. Like I said, yeah. we're, this is the pilot right here for it. Yes, and so it's improv. So, so, so we're gonna start with start with with young young Pan the Man. Am I going first? You're gonna go first. Uh, so if, if, if I, I could, if I could now, uh, if I could remove the idea of integrated voice comms for League of Legends from the community, I would. I and I have no desire Stop to talk that. with anybody in Dynamic Q ever, and I really wish you guys would stop bringing it up. I don't. I don't hate that one at all. Yeah. I don't. I don't hate that one at all. Yeah. There's there, there's really no benefit. And here's the thing: people will say that oh, the team with better communication wins. That's under the assumption that that in fucking you communicate you know, like Wood League, you know, two, uh, that everyone knows what they're talking about, and somebody's gonna listen to somebody else. Nope. That doesn't happen. I don't. I, I don't. I play with five friends. I don't listen to any of them. I still yeah, do what I want. I'm not gonna listen to some fucking random stranger in dynamic queue telling me what to do. That I'm guy not, can go fuck off. Yeah, I'm not gonna listen to Yolo Swaggin. Sorry, I don't. I don't. I know Overwatch has it. I don't use it in Overwatch. I don't talk to the randos. But to I've be never fair, talk we, to randos. To be fair, the only time I turn it on is when I'm playing with friends. Yeah, I'm never gonna talk to randos. Yeah. So yeah. if that idea could just go away, if I yeah. could, I would make that happen. That's not a bad one. I like mm -hmm. that one. Um, okay. If I could, um, if, if I could bring back ranked fives, I would. While I mm. don't love Dynamic Q, I understand Dynamic Q, but I miss the ability to play with my five friends in ranked and have it not be solo Q. Have the games matter, but not have it matter for my solo Q. So if I could bring back ranked fives and be able to put together a team of friends, I, I would absolutely do that because I miss it. And I think that's something that is sorely lacking right now in League of Legends is competitive team play. Mm -hmm. Back yeah, to you. No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, if I could start an all-female League of Legends team without it being a total joke, uh, I would. Really? Yeah. No, I would totally do it. But the problem is... It, the, the, the where, female aspect. Where are you going to find these five? That's, the, that's the problem. The female aspect, total marketing, PR bullshit. As long as they're good players, is, is what I would want. But the problem is, the uh, the the demographic for League of Legends is not is not ladies. I mean, ladies. I know there's there's a diamond lady player out there. There's probably not enough that want to go pro, and definitely not enough that want to go pro and make it their careers. Yeah, I, unfortunately. I, I, but I, if if they were out there, and if I could start a team and make them not a joke, I would do that. That's that's very altruistic. Thank you. Yeah, that's and also I probably wouldn't uh, use you porn as a sponsor oh. for a five man lady squad. Well, it'll be a five woman lady squad. What did I say? Five man. Whatever, man. Five equality. Person. Five, five person. And it'd be five person yeah. if it's equality. Yeah, five person. <laughs> um. If I could get uh, uh, the, 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 the two heads of Riot Games in a room with me, I would smack them in the face. <laughs> nice. Would um, you, uh, a three suit, just like clunk their heads together? I would. I would be the, I would be the Mo to their Larry and Curly. Yeah. I would absolutely. And this isn't because I don't Poke like them. Both them. In the eyes. Yeah, this isn't because I don't like them. This isn't because I advocate, advocate violence in any situation. I just feel like these are two gentlemen that need a good hard reality slap in the face from a regular person in the community. Yeah. I feel like, um, and, and you know, and, and, and maybe I'm being the big one about this, you know, going, reaching too far, you know, reaching for the stars. But i I feel like they have so many glad handing, uh, yes, man, jackasses that tell them everything that they say is, is awesome and correct and right. And I feel like they need someone to tell them, no, every decision you make isn't right. In fact, the majority of them are really bad and are wrong. And I think you guys should listen to your community more or do what Blizzard does and only speak to us when you have something positive to say. I feel, yeah. like, I feel like Riot gets in a situation where they respond too much. And too much communication usually indicates um, 
a, a, a just you don't really know what your community wants. Mm -hmm. When you're communicating too much, it means there's too much back and forth, which means you don't understand the situations well enough. Whereas what Blizzard does is they only tell you when something good is going to happen, and very rarely do they get caught in a situation where everything that they say to the public gets scrutinized and, and, and taken in such a negative light. Like, for example, the response to Dynamic Q when Riot actually came out and said, we thought about it and we decided, no, we're not going to do anything yeah. in terms of bringing back Solo Q. That is something that doesn't require a response. If you're not changing anything, then there is no need to address it. That's a good point. So if I could do anything, it would he get poke, poke, in the room poke Trindamir right in the fucking eyeball. Poke Trindamir in the, <laughs> in the eyeball and smack Rise across his stupid face. Okay, I've got the winner. Are you ready? Go for it, please. If I could, uh, if I could fix it so that whenever the client patches, it doesn't reset the volume to blow out my eardrums <laughs> whenever, whenever I turn it on. That's not bad. I, I would do that. I swear to God, if there's another patch and I have my headphones on and I fucking log in and the <gasps> kong hits me in the face, uh, I, I'm, I'm quitting the game. All right, I, I've, I have one more, and this yeah. is this is the winner. Okay. This is the winner. Close it uh, out for us. Okay, okay, I, I, I've got one, and I, you, you, you almost have to know what it is. Yeah. If I could make TSM fans less obnoxious <sighs> and more palatable, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, Jesus Christ I, himself couldn't pull that yeah, one off. I feel like their, I, I, I feel like their heart is in the right place. It's their brain that I have the questions about. Uh, everything that they do, say, and think is wrong and stupid. Yeah. And I feel like while they want to say the right things, they just don't. Also, if I could make LCS fans stop cheering for ward kills, I would. Mm, yeah, that's a good one. I kind of feel like heading over to uh, the TSM subreddit is a lot like heading over to the, the Donald subreddit. <laughs> it's not It's not super different. I think it's just less caps lock. Uh, probably. Yeah. Maybe the same amount of caps lock, just in different places. Yeah, different formatting. <laughs> just different formats. Uh -huh. So I like it. I, 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 like this, uh, I like this little segment. It was good. I like this little segment. Great. Thanks for, um, thanks for coming out and watching the show, guys. Yeah, uh, like I said, we're back, and we will have more fun stuff for you guys in the weeks coming. Hopefully, mm -hmm. this is an ever-evolving process. But as always, I am Captain Hooks. I'm Pan the Man. And we will see you on the Rift. Bye-bye. Tower Dive is myself, Ryan Adams, and my co-host, Robert Gersey. You can find more of us at youtube.com slash Tower Dive or wherever you find podcasts. If you have any feedback, you can leave us a comment or reach out to us on Twitter at Tower Dive PC. 